Hi, what I'm going to show you in this video is how let's understand uh, what linear programming is. If you're already familiar with linear programming, you probably uh, know what it is and how you can solve problems using linear programming. But if you're not familiar, I highly recommend you to read the theory first. Wide areas such as engineering, finance and computer science, all kinds of engineering areas is, is heavily used. So it's it's more about optimization, okay? Optimization of uh, functions. But here in this case, we are talking only about linear functions. You could also want to uh, optimize non-linear function, but uh, we will see in a later lecture as to how we can do that. But linear programming is all about optimizing linear functions. We'll take an example, okay? So here is this example. We want to maximize um, this function 2x plus y subject to a set of constraints. So we have got three inequality constraints. One is 2y plus x should be less than or equal to 22. The second constraint is uh, negative 5y plus 4x should be less than 15. And the third constraint is negative y plus 4x should be less than 12. So that's the third constraint. And the last one is actually not an inequality constraint, it's the equality constraint, which is negative y plus 4x should be equal to 16. And there are two more constraints, both x and y should be positive. It should be greater than or equal to 0, 0 or a positive number. So what do we want then? We want the value of x and y that uh, satisfies these uh, constraint uh, and we want to maximize x maximize j um, in such a way that you know these constraints are satisfied um, and yet the value of the function is maximum okay so so x and y are the decision variables so we want values for x and y so we call that as uh, decision variable the function that is to be optimized uh, when we say optimize it could be minimized or maximized in python actually we can only um, minimize not maximize but you can always convert a maximization problem to a minimization problem and a minimization problem to a maximization problem so that's always easy to do but remember one thing that uh, not all LPP problems have got a solution, proper solution. You will have a linear programming problem in sort known as LPP uh, that uh, does not have a solution, right? And this situation arises when, uh, you know, you do, cannot find uh, values for your decision variable that uh, satisfy all the constraints. Um, that could also happen that you will never have a solution uh, for some of some of the problems uh, but if there are values for your decision variable that can satisfy all the constraint then we can term it them as um, solution to the problem how do we solve it in python okay now we have taken this example right we'll try to solve this in python so we'll try to find out the value of x and y that maximizes g subject to the this three inequality constraint and the one uh, equality constraint also ensuring that both x and y are um, zero or a positive number so we will import this lean prog function from scipy so from scipy dot optimize we import this function um, as i said uh, this lean prog does not allow maximization so we have to convert a maximization problem to a minimization but that's easy what you do is that simply um, change the sign for uh, each of the variables so instead of maximizing g equal to 2x plus y we want to minimize negative of g so simply it changes the function you know you simply multiply a negative so it becomes now negative 2x negative y right uh, also note that linprog, this linprog function does not allow um, greater than equal to. It always allows uh, less than equal to. 
if you have greater than or equal to, you can change the sign and convert to a less than or equal to. So that's also possible. But in this case, we do not have le greater than or equal to uh, uh, constraint. So there is no issue. Okay. Then um, we have to define some uh, variables before we use this uh, in probe function. So how you do that? So we have to first, uh, yeah, this is uh, one variable where we uh, put the coefficients of the objective function. Uh, and what is our objective function? Negative 2x, negative y, right? So what are the coefficients here? Negative 2 and negative 1, right? So here we put it in a bracket. Okay. Um, then we have to define another variable. We call it an LHS. So we have to then put all the um, coefficients for this uh, constraint, so the inequality constraint, into one set of one in in one vector form, um, right? So here you see this coefficient. For example, for the first case, it's two and one, right? Only LHS side. RHS side will be we'll see later. We'll define in another variable, but in LHS side, we only have two and one for the first inequality constraint. For the second one we have negative 5 and 4. For the third one, it's negative 1 per flow, right? So that's exactly what we have here. And then we have RHS side, okay? But only for the inequality one. There is also an equality constraint, but we have to make a differentiation between the inequality constraint and the equality constraint. And remember, when we're talking about inequality constraint, it has to be less than or equal to inequality constraint. If you have greater than or equal to inequality constraint, then you have to convert that to a less than or equal to inequality constraint. Okay. Similarly, you take that for RHS. Okay. So for RHS, we have 22, 15, and uh, 12. Okay. And that's what we have. Now for equality constraint. So the last uh, equation is the equality constraint, right? Negative y plus 4x is equal to 16. Just to make a differentiation between inequality constraints and equality constraints, I'm using this prefix um, eq, okay? Um, and the coefficients are negative 1 and 4. Like, like uh, how we did for inequality constraints, you can also get these coefficients. Uh, that's uh, LHS and the RHS on the right hand side of the equation you have 16 right so here we assign 16 just to confirm you again so 16 is taken from here it's the right side of the equation right it's as simple as that okay but ensure that the order of the rows and columns is exactly same as you have in the equation if you change the order then it becomes a problem right so make sure that you know you have the order perfect. I mean you can't just change twenty. You can't just take twenty-two to the rightmost part and bring twelve here. That's going to be then wrong. You'll you'll have a wrong solution in that case. So order has to be uh, exactly same for both LHS and RHS. The next thing is about the boundary of the decision variable. So decision variable. Uh, in this case can take only zero and a positive number right it has to be above uh, equal to and above zero uh, but in some cases we might allow uh, any number from negative infinity to positive infinity uh, but that's not the case here so here we have to define so we take another variable boundary variable uh, and we define that it should be bit, uh, within zero to infinity okay both x and y now you could have different boundary conditions for x uh, from that of y that could also be uh, case but not in this case for both x and y it uh, has the same boundary condition but remember one thing here that for lin pro function it always takes 0 to infinity by default as the boundary condition so it exactly matches our requirement but it's not going to be the same all the times so you have to make the adjustment accordingly right if the boundary condition says that okay it has to be between 5 to infinity okay and y will be let's say 7 to infinity 
then we have to make this change right so by default you will have zero to infinity positive infinity so even if you don't use the boundary uh, variable uh, it's still going to work uh, but but i'm just um, uh, defining this just to show you an example and you you can use that in case where you know you have to change the boundary condition um, instead of zero you want some other value okay finally once we have uh, defined all our uh, requirements for the optimization we will fit them into the optimization function so lean prog is the function okay we have to be very careful about the syntax okay uh, c is nothing but the objective function and we have given the coefficients of the objective function in this uh, variable called obg right and that's what we have given here with a comma then you define um, the um, the upper bound basically is the inequality constraint uh, the lhs part first and then the rhs part okay so that's inequality part then for the equality part you have a underscore eq equal to lhs underscore eq now this is coming from our own definition now you can give any name okay but make sure that you make a differentiation between no uh, inequality constraint and the equality constraint um then b underscore q by the way this a underscore q uh, b underscore q, these are keywords so you can't just change uh, on your own i mean these are the keywords you have to use and then bounds is the bnd okay a bnd is something that we have defined you can just give any name the boundary condition right and the method uh, there are various method which you can use in a linear programming problem um, in this case i have used simplex you can use other methods also for example you have uh, interior point methods also uh, you have revise simplex method uh, i have used simplex okay the three methodology you can also try out how you know the uh, the values of your decision variable x and y differs if you change the method right in most cases you don't change if you have a perfect solution then you will never have an, you will never have a, a difference between uh, uh, values of your decision variables but that might change uh, in certain cases okay now we will run the code okay um so let's quickly run this so boundary case needs to run now we will run this okay so then we should be able to understand the results from this uh, run what it says is that success is false if success is false that means the optimization did not succeed so there is no solution reliable solution for this problem okay if success is true only then you have a reliable solution for this problem okay a solution that satisfy all this all the constraint right and what went wrong uh, is something explain here so in the message it says why it is unable to give you a solution right so as i said uh, optimization problems uh, need not always be feasible sometimes they are infeasible because you do not have uh, you know proper solution for uh, for a, for some problems and these are infeasible problem in this case it is turns out to be an infeasible problem but i'm just experimenting maybe this equality constraint is is actually creating the issue uh, maybe if you can get rid of this then we'll have a solution so i'm trying to get rid of this equality constraint but all the three inequality constraints are still there okay so i'll just remove remove them and uh, let me run it again and here you see success is now true okay so uh when we just made a bit of a change in the in the optimization uh, in the constraints it is now working okay maybe the equality constraint was uh, 
you know too strict a constraint for this problem but now after removing it we have uh, solutions for x and y right so what are these values for uh, x and y here are these values 8.4 and 5.1 and success is true number of iteration is 4 okay fun is basically the value the the minimum value right at which uh, the program converts or the optimization routine converts okay um, can we change the method and see whether they, we get different uh, we get different results so we change it to revise simplex okay okay that's interesting so we got um, different numbers now and so now it's x the values are 11 and 0 quite interesting and then interior point okay if you do not use the by default interior point methodology is used okay let's remove this and probably uh, we will get a different result okay so it's 8.9 and 4.1 you know why this is happening because um, we are having multiple solution to the problem it's not that you'll always have a single solution you could also have more than one solution uh, to a given optimization problem right and depending on the methodology for optimization you are getting different solution so um, some optimization problem uh, will have more than one solution and that's exactly is, is the case here so the next uh, next video i'll take more real world problem uh, i'll probably take an example from um, inventory management or or man uh, something else something related to manufacturing because manufacturing is one area where optimizations are used quite heavily so i'll take more real world problem next time to show you um, how we can do it in python thanks